Chapter 1.4, quick review, page 124. Uh, chapter 1.4 has to deal with operations on the functions and composition functions. So this is kind of exercise 1 through 10, a review of determining the domain of a function. And we're going to look at this strictly algebraically, so we're not going to get out a graphing calculator or anything to look at this. Well, we might look at kind of to corroborate what we've seen, but anyway, uh, we're going to look at the odd number problems here. You can work out the even ones, we hope. Problem 1, f of x equals x minus 2 over x plus 3. Basically, in finding the domain, what you're looking for is you're looking for an exclusion of the domain. In other words, what the domain of the function cannot be. And if we look at the numerator here, we have x minus 2. Now, x minus 2 in and of itself is a polynomial function. And a polynomial function has as its domain all real numbers. So if we're looking for exclusions to something in the numerator, we're not going to find it. But in the denominator, we have a different situation. Because what do we know about a denominator? Well, a denominator, can you divide by, by zero in math or in algebra? No. And so we know that this value, x plus 3, cannot equal zero. And so if we solve by subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation, we know that x cannot equal negative 3. And that is the only, this value of negative 3 is the only exclusion to the domain. And so if we were to look at this in a number line, we would go ahead and put our number line out here and put as our critical value here, negative 3. And what goes at negative 3? An exclusion. How do we represent an exclusion on a number line or on a graph? By an open point. And we should know that everything less than negative 3 and everything greater than negative 3 will be part of the domain. And so our domain of this function we can write in interval notation as greater than negative infinity all the way up to but not including negative 3 and we put in union, we could have put and or comma, but strictly speaking, interval notation, you would use this union symbol, and then greater than negative 3, uh, uh, all the way up to less than infinity. And so we kind of look at it, it's, it's sort of like this whole domain is cut in one place. And if you cut a rope or a string in one place, how many pieces of string do you have two pieces and see these are the two pieces right here cut at exactly x equals negative three so let's uh, go on to our next odd number problem which is three and we have f of t equals five minus t now again we look for an exclusion in this case we do not have a polynomial function what do we know about 5 minus t? Well, 5 minus t is within this radical. And what can you take the square root of? Well, you can take the square root of a number greater than or equal to 0. So we can write this as 5, 5 minus t is what? Has to be greater than or equal to 0. And if we subtract 5 from both sides of this inequality, we get uh, negative t is greater than or equal to negative 5. And if we divide both sides of the equation or multiply both sides of the equation by negative 1, we'll say we'll multiply here. We have t is greater than or equal to 5. Is that correct? No, this is not correct. 
Why not? Because when we multiply or divide by a negative number to solve an inequality, we have to change the direction of the inequality. So in this case, instead of t being greater than or equal to 5, t is going to be less than or equal to 5. And so here we have an inequality notation, and we can change this into a number line notation. We have 5 here. T is less than or equal to 5. What goes on 5? We have a point, not an open point, and then less than. So in interval notation, we would write this as our domain, which I put D, colon. We have starting from the smallest, which is going to be greater than negative infinity, all the way up to 5. Now in this instance, the domain includes the value of 5, so we put, instead of a closing parentheses, we put a closing bracket. So this would be an interval notation. Answer number 3. Next on our problem, which is 5. f of x equals ln x. Well, uh, we went over chapter 1.3, which were the uh, parent functions of pre-calculus, one of which was the logarithmic, the natural log function. And natural log looks something like, function looks something like this. Let's see, I think at 1, 0, so function goes like this. This is basically the natural log function. And the square root is going to go ahead and you take the square root of this number, you're always going to have a positive number, and this kind of has multiple constraints, because we can have this be zero, okay. this can be zero, but let's look at ln x. You are always going to have a Go ahead and put this in here and see what we get. X, Y, or X, F of X. I put Y, X of X. Can we have uh, the logarithm of a negative number? No, we cannot. So, zero y is going to does not exist. Now, if we put the logarithm of, let's say, 1 half, well, we're going to get a negative number. Any input value less than 1, we're going to get a negative number. And so, the square root of a negative number does not exist. Next, if we press put in 1 as an input value, we're going to get put in 1 ln of 1. What do we have to raise? What power do we have to raise? Uh, 1, 2 to equals 0, well, that's going to be 0. So now we're starting to exist. If we go to, to 2, we're going to have square root of, of ln 2. I don't know exactly what it is, but something. So the function really starts to exist here at x equals 1. And so we can write this in interval notation as domain. Uh, we have 1, and we can go get to higher and higher numbers. So we say 
greater than or equal to 1, but less than infinity. So that's going to be our domain of this function here. Uh, composition of functions, really, because we have the logarithmic function inside a square root function. So that's what chapter 1.4 is. Okay, next on number problem, 7. Next uh, is, uh, we have uh, a numerator here. And again, we have a polynomial function numerator, no exclusions. No exclusions. So if it's simply f of t equals t plus 5, that would be all real numbers. But here in the denominator is where we can get in trouble. So if we put, we know that t squared plus 1 uh, cannot equal 0. Now if we subtract 1 from both sides of this equation, or this inequality rather, we get t squared equals negative 1. And if we take the square root of both sides of this inequality, we get uh, this here. Square root of, so we have t is not equal to plus or minus square root of negative 1. Now, can we take the square root of negative 1 as a real number answer? No. There is no answer. And so, therefore, since there are no, there's no answer to this inequality here, there are no exclusions in the denominator. No exclusions. And since we have no exclusions to the domain, what is our domain? Our domain is all real numbers, which in interval notation is greater than negative infinity, less than infinity. The last problem we'll look at in this exercise set is, is 9. We have uh, f of t equals 1 over the square root of point 1 minus x squared. So uh, it's kind of a mixed thing. Looks like this error should be f of x instead of f of t. But anyway, I think we get the picture of what's going on here in spite of this. We know that this value here, square root of 1 minus x squared, that cannot equal 0. But we also know that what's inside the radical of 1 minus x squared has to be greater than or equal to 0. But we know that the thing cannot equal 0 because this cannot be 0. So, and the square root of 0 is 0. So we can just write this equality as 1 minus x squared is greater than 0. And if we subtract 1 from both sides of this inequality, we have negative x squared is greater than negative 1. And if we multiply the equation, the inequality by negative 1, we get x squared is, now remember we have to change our signs, is less than, right, 1. And if we take the square root of both sides of this inequality, we get x is less than plus or minus 1. And what this amounts to is x has to be between negative 1 and 1. So again, let's see, negative 1, 1. We have open points because the thing cannot be 0, right? And then in between. So 0 would be a correct um, answer. Let's see. If we put in 1, we have 1 minus 1 
that will be 0, and you can't divide by 0. If you put in negative 1, we would have the same. So our domain is going to be greater than negative 1, less than 1. All right, uh, that'll be all the numbers we're going to be covering from this exercise set. Go ahead and tackle the even number problems. Thank you for viewing.